Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys and gals. Well, let me get a sip of my water first. My radio voice going on. Let's talk about this. Sorry, right, let's talk about aspartame diet sodas. You know, you get people who are scared of these things, but the fact of the matter is, as a weight loss strategy and as far as the actual health and safety data on it, this is not something you should be worried about. And again, this is why we have science. And people say, well, I don't believe in science. Well, okay, then you're an ignoramus. And I'm not saying some science isn't biased, but do some digging and research into it, okay? Understand where the financial biases and things actually are. Because people get that wrong all the time. All the freaking time. Let my air conditioner out. Hold on. It's disrupting my video. Can't have that. All right. There we go. Let's keep going with this video. So, where was I? Making fun of stupid people. Understand where the biases are and quit getting it wrong. People do that all the time. They think the bias is one way, but in reality, there's actual financial bias towards the thing that they're pushing, even though it still keeps losing in the research. It's the only reason there's any data supporting it. But over to this topic, let's look at the real world. Let's set aside science. Let's look at real world results. When I lost my 100 pounds, I chugged diet soda all the time. You know why it's helpful? It's a valuable weight loss tool. Do you know why? Because there's no calories to it. The bubbly stuff is filling. You get the taste sweet. It's fantastic for weight loss. Now people who say, what about potential bloating or, or whatever with an insulin response? In insulin is not what you should be concerned about. So my response to that, how many competitive bodybuilders do you know? I've met quite a few who drink large amounts of diet soda and they're cut all the way up to showtime and they get shredded ridiculously lean to an unsustainable level of lean just fine and they feel that the diet soda is a useful tool for it okay how many coaches do you know who say that who actually have advanced science degrees quite a few how many of them are even on social media here who do this and admit it quite a few so if we were to go off the real world, and let's just ignore studies, say, okay, well, if you think whatever research is biased, let's just look at the real world, what you can see. The most shredded, absolutely shredded human beings on the face of the earth with the lowest body fats imaginable, which would be competitive bodybuilders. No one else gets as lean as them because you can't sustain it. Tons of them use diet soda right up till showtime. So what would you say as far as it being helpful versus benef beneficial or harmful for fat loss based upon just the real world evidence and not even looking at studies? You would probably conclude based upon that that it's pretty freaking awesome. Again, we don't have to look at any research. Now, when we look at the research, what do we find? People who replace normal sodas with diet sodas lose weight much, much quicker consistently study after study so what about the safety data there's always stuff looking for negatives in everything you need to understand this you need to understand this there are always studies trying to find the negatives you have to look at what the sum total data shows uh, as far as even aspartame it's not one of those that's showing any sort of significant gut biome disruption but here's the other thing i would say people who will bring something like that up and I say, okay, well, what are you doing about your gut biome? Like, how important is your gut biome to you? Like, what do you mean? Like, does your lifestyle support an extremely healthy gut biome? Do you eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables? Do you eat a wide variety of fiber every single day? If your answer is no, then shut up. You don't care about your gut biome at all. Because that's actually the single most important thing you could do then, then, you know, probiotic foods and stuff further, way further up the list. But those things I just listed, that's the key. And in fact, not having healthy gut flora is half the reason people develop some of these bowel syndrome problems they have. They say, well, I can't eat this and I can't eat that now, so I have to do this diet. Yeah, because you've already messed up your gut biome, jackass. 
Stop messing up your gut biome and you won't have this problem. Actually eat those foods, find the fruits and vegetables you can eat and start adding diversity and build up your gut flora and half these problems will go away. But then they, they take it to the other extreme and just kill their gut biome all further with some of the weird diets they do. Again, we come over to the point, don't bring up the topic of you're concerned about gut biome unless you actually care about it, actively care about it, okay? So again, a very moot point, but again, aspartame hasn't really been found to be one of the artificial sweeteners they're particularly concerned with with this. Uh, cancer risk, never been found in humans. There's never been one study that's a, found an association between increased cancer rates and aspartame, which would, is what's in diet sodas. There's never been one. Keeping in mind, people can't say, oh, this is pro-soda. No, it's not because all these same researchers think regular full sugar sodas are horrific. Most of them say, yeah, they're horrible for you. You shouldn't be drinking those. These are a viable, healthier replacement. Okay. People say, why well, choose just to drink? Well, then drink water then. Because water is probably the only thing you're going to find that's healthier than that. So that there's actually a little bit of electrolytes in these diet sodas. But then we also come back over to the satiety issue and weight loss. They're useful there. But even, even the FDA's data on it, the, their safe limits, they've actually said this is only a hypothetical safe limit. We don't actually have any evidence that it's dangerous beyond this. The, even the WHO said, hey, we're going to classify it as a possible carcinogen, but we can't actually test the amount. We have a hypothetical pathway by which we think it could cause cancer in humans at doses that we can't ethically give them in a study. We don't think it's dangerous below that, but at those doses, we have a possible pathway, but we can't prove it because we can't subject a human to this ethically. Okay. All right. But if we use that logic, here's our thing. How many healthy foods, beautifully healthy foods, and high enough doses become problematic? Of course they do. And aspartame is just, it would be the same with that. The amount you would have to consume would, would literally be like dry cups. It would be something like instead of liquid, just the dry powder of this container, every day you would have to dry chug it somehow. Every single day to even be in their risk category. So if you're getting it from even what they, they consider the, the absolute, considered to be 100% safe limit, even with the FDA, it's something like 18 cans of soda. Okay, like Diet Coke. But they're not saying it's dangerous beyond that. It's just that they know that it's, it's absolutely safe in their opinion up to that point. Again, this is the same FDA that outlawed trans fats where people say, oh, I don't trust any scientists in the government. But these same ones outlawed trans fats in America. They said, these are bad. We don't need them in any amount. Let's make it illegal to add them to foods. And so you believe that and you trust that. So I would say to the people who say that then, so do you go eat a bunch of trans fats? The FDA banned them. So using your logic, you should be, they, you, they're healthy then, and you should be finding them and consuming them. Do you see the problem with your logic? Yeah, this is bad. Quit making everything a conspiracy, people. All right, so that's my spiel on diet soda and aspartame. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.